guys, it's your boy Leon with guns and Creator. Welcome back to another video. Sorry for the long wait. Thought I heard yeah, a ghost somebody, or something. <laughs> yeah, somebody had to go out of town, aka me. Um, yeah, I had to go. Yeah, long story short, me Creator had to go out of town for work, and I edit the videos as well. And it, yes, I. In case you guys didn't know, I edit the videos as well, and I do make fun of myself. So, Creator, what? Uh, what topic are we covering this glorious day today, or night to be precise? Everybody's favorite game series. Everybody's like, it, it, if anybody, if you guys have played this game before, this game series, you know that it's at least in your top three. And it's my all-time favorite game series, and we're going to talk about the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sam Fisher. Leon, why don't you go ahead and introduce those who don't know about Splinter Cell to the series a little bit, and we'll move on from there. All right, well, to anyone who doesn't know, Splinter, Splinter Cell is one game in a long and glorious fr franchise from a game producer by the name of Tom Clancy. The first, which was released back in, if I remember correctly, 2002, and of course they have their tie-in novels, which we won't go too far into that, because I haven't actually read the tie-in novels. Ooh, please don't hate me. <laughs> But Sam Fisher is a highly trained agent of a fictional Black Ops subdivision. Hence, fictional, meaning it doesn't exist, but it would be awesome if it did. Well, we would don't you... know if it exists because you know how the government is. But yes, as far as yeah. we know, it's fictional. But of course, this subdivision is within the NSA dubbed Third Echelon. Ooh cool of course this uh the levels of the game is as well a lot of it was designed using the unreal engine in case any of you know who that is a lot of games are made on the unreal engine some of them okay others pretty good but this game specializes on emphasizing light and darkness as part of the gameplay elements isn't that right creator absolutely i believe it's the first game to do that I could be wrong, because I don't think Metal Gear did that, at least until the later games, but I think Splinter Cell was the first. Somebody yeah. correct us if we're wrong, but I believe Splinter Cell was the first to utilize not only light, noise, detection as well. Yeah, that... Besides, all of the console games for PC and all that were positively received, if I remember correctly, and this series along with Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed is considered to be one of the two flagship franchise is selling more than 31 million copies as of 2011. Wow, that's popular. But yeah, so of course, with the game series, uh, you have the developers of Ubisoft. You have their Montreal branch, their Milan, Shanghai, Toronto. You also have Gameloft as well. The publishers of this game series as well as Ubisoft, Gameloft. And I apologize if I'm butchering this name, if anyone knows the correct pronunciation. S-Fire Media, and of course this, this game series is on multiple consoles. We're talking Xbox, Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 2, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Mobile Phone, N-Gage, OS X, Nintendo DS, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. But yeah, their first released game was the original Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell back in 2002 of November 17th. And one of their latest releases, which not really new, but they really haven't came out with a new one yet was Splinter Cell's Blacklist back in 2013. So of course, it, it's a very popular franchise. I mean, you have the novels, which like I said, were written by Miss one Mr. Raymond Benson under the pseudonym, pseudonym, I don't know how to pronounce the correct word. Don't worry, Greeter, you don't have, you're not the one who has your spelling errors in moments, but pretty much he goes under another alias of David Michaels. But yeah, so pretty much the main plot of the game series, well, the main, the very first one, uh, the other ones tend to drift into other directions, but the main plot is Sam Fisher is investigating a terrorist group called the Shadows, which are related to arms dealing organization named the Shop. Members of the Shop use inside information to attempt to kill third echelon members, including Fisher. That is the main gist of the, the game itself. But I, like I said, and I could game, go on and on. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to basically break it down, that's what the first one's about. And it pretty much continues this formula of the start of the game, Fisher getting a mission. By the end of the game, he's completing the mission, taking out the main bad guy. 
Uh, but then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The only game that is different from the series was, of course, Conviction, where it was the first and only game where Sam Fisher was working by himself to take down Sarah's killer. And then, of course, Blacklist came out after that, and he was back with Third Echelon. And, of course, we haven't had a new one since then. Uh, Creator, if you don't mind me putting this info now. I don't know if it's just me, but is Anna Grimm seem to be getting younger as the games progress? Yeah, she is definitely getting hotter. I mean, younger as the games progress. <laughs> um, but no, if uh, we're gonna put, we'll put a side by side comparison of her on screen so you guys can see her. But every game, she's different. Like in, so. uh, in the in the beginning ones, it was maybe slight changes, but as <laughs> the newer games came out, there were big like big changes to her looks and that but yeah but like i was saying yeah i could go on and on with the whole thing, just but i'm pretty sure you all want to get into the juicy details of what creator and guns has to say so creator i'll let you take it from here thank you for that lovely introduction leon um always good to always good to have everybody on at the same time anyway back to the point of the video so as he mentioned the main character is sam fisher and Basically, he, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, I'll just go over his bat story a little bit, and then we'll get into the gun. You know, his signature weapon that, of course, everybody came here for. So, essentially, Sam Fisher, he was born in 1957 in Baltimore, in the Baltimore suburb of Towson, Maryland. And not much is known about his childhood. Uh, what we do know so from the stories is that he attended a military boarding school after the death of his parents when he was a child until being accepted into the United States Naval Academy, which is a real academy, where he graduated in 1980 with a bachelor's degree in political science and commissioned as an uh, ensign in the United States Navy, which is an O-1 in the Navy. Uh, soon after, his personal file was flagged and by recruitment by the Navy SEALs, which he joined after passing their grueling selection process and training program. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, uh, not just like in game, but in real life, I believe he's probably, he would probably have to go through, uh, it's a two year course, I know at least for enlisted, and I'm assuming that would be BUDS, that would be underwater training, uh, that would be scuba diver training, and all that stuff, just like the enlisted guys. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe that is correct, Creator. So he has some serious stuff under his belt. Oh yeah, uh, and I believe the passing rate for just buds alone, because most people when they get through buds, then it's pretty much you know uphill from from there. But buds is obviously the hardest course for the armed forces in the United States, and it's one of the I believe it's the hardest course in the one of one of the hardest courses uh, for armed forces in the world. Those guys are no joke and nobody to mess with. So. Yep. But, I mean, we haven't, yeah. we haven't even gotten to the more juicier details already. Sam Fisher is pretty outstanding. And then, of course, um, he did that. Um, he passed the program. And in the mid-80s, while Sam Fisher was was attached to a so CIA, still doing active duty with the Navy and working under the official dip diplomatic cover in Georgia, the country, not, uh, not the state, it's actually part of the USSR. Uh, he meant a CIA Pripset analysis named Regan Burns, and hmm. they married. Uh, they married in 1984 and had a small ceremony in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. After leaving that, Regan was pregnant, and on May 31st. 1985 of course reagan gave birth to their only child who they named sarah and then of course fisher and reagan divorced after three years married after gaining custody of sarah reagan she returned to her maiden name and changed sarah's as well uh and then when reagan died from cancer sometime in 2000 fisher gained custody of sarah and moved back to the united states where he took a job with the cia where he worked in a weapons development as well as studied uh, experimental weaponly, weaponly and warfare in order to spend more time with, with, with his daughter, Sarah. And of course, that's when Third Echelon comes in. 
and that's when third echelon comes in and recruits him and then pretty much all the stuff that um Liam was talking about takes place after that. Wow. So this man had a pretty, definitely things weren't easy. Yeah, he got recruited with third Lesh on after that. And anybody who's played the first games kind of, kind of, kind of sees where he gets recruited and stuff like that. I mean, it's never, it's never super in, in detailed, but you see him get recruited. You see him do the training and then he goes off on the first mission, second, third, yeah, so on and forth. So yeah, that's pretty much my thing on Sam Fisher, I don't think I really need to go in depth. I think everything else, uh, Leon covered uh, excellent in his portion. So guns, you would go ahead with the main event. The gun that Sam Fisher used, the FN 5.7, was designed in Belgium. And it was designed between 1993 and 1998. It's been in service with the military, with different militaries since 2000 to present and it's in use with 20 nations there's five different variants of the 5.7 there's the regular 5.7 5.7 tactical the 5.7 iom 5.7 usg and the 5.7 mark ii and it has three different types of magazines 10 round mag which is a restricted one you know gotta be california compliant why of course then there's a standard 20 round magazine Ooh. And then the extended magazine is 30 rounds. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine the length of that magazine guns? Well, the, the caliber is small, so it's like a mini uh, 556. That was basically all the information I can get. Well, so. also, if you don't mind me jump uh, throwing in here, I managed to find a little bit of info on the other variants, which describes how different they are to the original 57, as gun says you have the 5.7 tactical now mm -hmm. not a lot of different very big changes for the exception of the single action trigger and a safety device which also makes for some reason this 5.7 very hard to find and then you have the iom model or short for individual officers model now right. this was first publicly available. Uh, the first publicly available variant debuting commercially back in 2004. Right. Again, similar basic design, but differs that it has different accessory rail, a line trigger guard outside edge, and adjustable sights. It also incorporates a magazine disconnect. This safety mechanism prevents the weapon from being fired without the magazine inserted. In a way, it's pretty safe. And then we have the USG, or United States Government, which debuted back in 2005 and replaced the individual officer's model of the 5.7. The USG keeps the differences incorporated, such as the magazine disconnect and adjustable sights, but has further modifications, including conventional shaped Emphasis on square trigger guard, a checkered grip pattern, and a larger reversible magazine release. And then Very we right. have the last one, the USG Mark II, which was released back in 2013. The design changes include a one-piece top slide instead of two halves that were welded together in earlier versions, and as well as texturing on the front portion of the side to facilitate takedown and that seems to be about it i'm on these other variants but yeah a pretty very substantial gun yeah and um you know it's it's one of those things like five seven it's just it's just a classic it's just a classic weapon five seven very known weapon uh very well known weapon a uh, very reliable weapon i mean not personally my first choice but i know a lot of people that that do go for it so hey hats off to it yeah so my conclusion Sam Fish is a badass. He's got a badass, well, reliable, known uh, weapon under his disposal. You know? Yeah. It's technically a secondary, but I mean, it's pretty much his primary if we're going to be on it. Yeah. And, uh, Good for cross quarters. Yeah, exactly. DCQ. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not really much to say on it. I mean, it's, it's obviously it's a real weapon. Very well known. Well, like I said, it's a very good weapon. You have different variants that have different improvements for specific shooters it's like like guns also said it's very good for close quarters i mean it's just one of those guns that i feel is reliable and 
very well known. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have as much service under its belt like the 1911, but you know, not not going to get too much into that. <laughs> okay, so we got a couple big announcements that's got Nation United. So we actually found a good artist, and we will be talking with them. So hopefully in the next, hopefully in you know about two or three videos, you know, like after, like, you get what I'm saying. Hopefully within the next couple of videos, we'll have some new channel art. We'll have some drawings, yeah. cool artists. So big shout out to him. There's gonna be more to come on that. Of course, when we get to stuff, we'll we'll leave his name and check out the stuff. Really cool artist. Guns and Leon don't know him, you know. But I know him. I've seen his stuff. Again, I'll I'll leave his Instagram um, when we get the art and stuff like that, and, and it's really cool. Second big announcement is, yes, I've been out of town, and because of that, we haven't been able to edit and do all that stuff. But yes, you know, this is th this week was kind of I'm not gonna say like a. a, 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 a an easy video or whatever but you know it, it was relatively uh i guess an easier video you know or shorter it was video. easy easy for us to do because we know the weapon and the yeah. game now now granted it's still something we want to talk about for a while because it's sam fucking fisher but let's just say uh next week is a whole different ball game we have quite a few guests coming on and we have a very big topic let's just say uh those of you who are big One Piece fans are going to want to stay tuned to NetSuite's video, which will probably be at least an hour long. Analysis on something involving One Piece. Okay, this has been Gun Nation United, Gun, Leon, and Creator. And the golden rule is keep your beer cold, your ammo hot, and your pencil sharp. See you next time.